So glad to see so many people join. My name is Shannon Webb, um, and I'll be presenting this session along with some self-advocate leaders from the Living Well Project. We'll introduce ourselves shortly. Just wanted to add too, for those of you who may not have seen it, um, the session is being you know, uh, closed captioned live. So there's transcription services that you're able to turn on to by um, using the control functions at the bottom of your screen. Okay, so what we're gonna do um, for the next hour is talk about rights, uh, personal rights that everybody has, including people with disabilities. And um, uh, as we move along, you can put your questions in the chat or your comments. Uh, we will make time for those um, at the end of our presentation and open up for other questions as well. So um, um, as I mentioned, my name is Shannon Webb and I am a project consultant working with the Wisconsin Board for People with Developmental Disabilities on a project called Living Well. And so uh, Living Well is part of a national project that Wisconsin is involved in to help uh, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities um, live healthy, safe, and connected lives in the community. So I'll um, have my co-presenters introduce themselves. Emily, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I'm Emily. I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, um, and I'm part of um, Living Our Visions Love, Inc. Christy? I'm, I'm in Watertown and I'm part of St. Colletta. Nathaniel? Hello, oh, my name is Nathaniel Lentz. I am from Reedsburg, Wisconsin. I am part of the Living Well grant, and I'm also an outreach self-advocate for People First Wisconsin. Thank you, Ginger? You're muted, Ginger. I am Ginger Buke from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and I am doing the Loving Well grant with SOAR. Fox City. Great, thank you, Ginger. Yeah, so uh, the four presenters with me are part of the Living Well Project, like I said, and we've, we've been partnering closely with People First Wisconsin and um, self-advocates across Wisconsin to you know, do some peer education and peer support with people across uh, Wisconsin to help them understand how to live um, healthy, safe, and connected lives. And also part of the work that we're doing is around rights education. Um, you know, helping to empower people to educate them so that they know all about their rights and um, can identify if their rights are being unduly restricted in any way um, and what to do about that. So what we found in our work um, in the Living Well Project is that you know, oftentimes people with disabilities um, are restricted in, in certain ways and, and they may not be aware of that or their families um, or guardians or service providers may not be aware of that. Um, you know, this, so they, you know, maybe due to discrimination or low expectations um, or other ways that people, you know, uh, because of different laws and whatnot are limiting the rights of people with disabilities. And we really want um, people to better understand um, the whole scope of their individual rights or personal rights, whichever um, way you choose to call them. So all those rights, even outside of services, right? A lot of people get information about the rights that they have with their services, but these are kind of everyday rights that we all get to enjoy that we'll be talking about. So we've put together um, some information in a toolkit for people with disabilities and another toolkit for their family members and guardians and a third toolkit uh, for um, the service providers that work with them that help people understand the whole scope of rights that people with disabilities have. So I'm like so I said- sorry to, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I think the interpreter spotlight has been removed. The sign language interpreter. Oh, I see a spotlight, but it looks like it's blurry or her camera came off. Okay. We're good. 
Thank you for catching that. Okay. All right. So we have these three versions of these booklets or rights toolkits um, that we are starting to work on in the Living Well Project. And we're hoping that these will be available very soon after we give them a try and see how they work to everyone across Wisconsin. So we have an agency version, a family guardian version and a self-advocate version. And the self-advocate version we've developed in very plain language and we've developed these um, in collaboration with the self-advocate leaders that are involved in the Living Well Project, as well as um, an organization called CQL or the Council on Quality and Leadership, which is a national leader in a lot of work around uh, improvements um, in services and, and whatnot for people with disabilities. So the goal of the agency toolkit is to increase um, knowledge of the staff and overall agency approach on how they understand the rights of people with disabilities. So like I said, going beyond just services and the right to appeal, uh, you know, if you don't um, like a service or want a different service. We want um, the staff and those agencies to really consider how they can um, improve their policies and the supports that they provide to help people fully exercise their rights and understand their rights. So, um, you know, the, the toolkit that we've created for agencies really gets them at, you know, having internal conversations um, as a group, like with the, in staff meetings and whatnot, and then leadership discussions about how they can change their agency to support people to more fully understand and exercise their rights. The goal of the family and guardian toolkit, uh, rights toolkit, is to also increase their understanding about the rights of people with disabilities that they support. Um, oh, and I made a typo here in my slide. It's not to help agencies think about how they can better support people with their rights, but it's about helping family members and guardians um, understand how they can uh, better support the rights of the people that they support. And the goal of the rights toolkit for self-advocates is really to help self-advocates learn about their rights, decide what rights are most important to them, and then think about how uh, people in their life can support them to fully exercise those rights or learn more about them if they want more information. So there are a number of um, areas that we'll talk about. So we're gonna, we're gonna share information about each one of these rights areas. Um, and the self-advocate leaders, my co-presenters, will take turns explaining why these rights are important and what self-advocates can do about, um, you know, how to exercise those rights, as well as, um, you know, why, you know, this is important to them personally. So we have uh, protection with the law and within your services. That's one that a lot of people know about that you know you have a right to appeal services, you have a right to um, have a hearing if you need to and have support for that. Um, we're gonna talk about a person's right to control their money, a right to their right to say what they want and express themselves, their right to be the religion that they want, their right to vote, the right to have privacy, the right to talk to and be around the people they want, the right, their right to be free from abuse and neglect or people hurting them. They have, you know, people have a right to go to school, uh, get a job and, you know, rest and do the things that you like. Uh, you have a right to medicine and, you know, from help, you know, medical help and um, to get supports and services from doctors um, that you need. You have a right to live where you want and with the people you want. You have the right to choose the services you want, decide your own schedule, and make important choices about your life. And you have the right to own the things that you want to own. So we'll talk about each one of those as we move along in the presentation today. So first off, we will start out with the right to, with the law and your own services. So, um, I'm not seeing my notes down below my slides here. Um, I think, yep, Ginger. Okay, there's my notes. Um, I had to hide my, my camera. All right. Your rights for the law and your services. You have the right 
asking for protection. What the law and what your services. This means you cannot be discriminated against. It means you have the right to be heard. People should go through the process to help you understand what is happening to you. They should treat you fairly. This can be in a courtroom or with your services. This is called due process. Things you can do. Speak up when you're not happy with your services. And if you don't understand why something is happening, take the time to learn about all your rights. Be at all meetings about you. Ask questions if you do not understand what people are saying or why things are happening. Things your staff or people that support you should do. They should never discriminate against you or treat you different. Give you information in a way you can understand. Take time to help you learn about your rights and to you in your meetings. Take the time to ask you questions and listen to your answers. Support you to be more independent and use your rights. What about this is important to you? Shannon, you're muted. Thank it's okay. You. Uh, what about that is important to you, Ginger, um, uh, ha about having rights under the law and with your services? What is important to me is that I direct my services the way I need them to be presented and um, how people support me there um, in my everyday life or if I need to have a medical test done, um, I can um, ask them why are we doing this and what is this going to accomplish once we do it? And I need to be told the results of whatever is done to me. Thank you, Ginger. 
Okay, next we have right to control your money. Christy, you wanna talk about this one? You can know about your money. You can have it when you want. You can spend it how you want. Everyone needs to learn how to manage money. It takes longer for pe some people to learn how to manage money wisely. This is true whether they have a disability or not. Do you want to learn how to manage your money? Your services can help you learn how to do this if you want to. Things you can do. Learn more about your money. Ask about the limits you have with your money. Ask who decided them and why they are there. Speak up about what you want with your money. Make plans with your staff so you can learn money skills. Things. Control, what about controlling your money? What is, what, why is that important to you? Uh, controlling my money is important to me. So I know where my funds are going and if I have the spare money to, for entertainment reasons or and so I know that my caregivers aren't taking advantage of my money. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, next we have Emily. You wanna talk about the right to express yourself? You have the right to say what you want and express yourself how you want. Anyone can say anything to anyone at any time. This is important because that is how people get to know you and how you can get what you what you want. Um, that could be services, choosing what you will do and when you will hang out with friends, scheduling appointments with physicians, therapists, family care providers, or IRIS consultant. You can think and say anything you want. This is freedom of speech. No one should stop you from saying what you want to anyone at any time. As a self-advocate, I talk with other self-advocates monthly to help get the word out. It does not matter your disability. Everyone has to be able and allowed to say what they want when they want. An example would be needing to change scheduling with the caregiver or employer. I exercise this right by saying what I need to change in my schedule, even if it will take time and possibly mean needing to meet a support person at a different time or less often. An example would be needing to change the time I meet with my therapist due to getting a new job. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Right. So then we have right to be the religion you want. Nathaniel, you wanna talk about this one? Yeah, um, you can believe in God if you want. You can go to the church you want when you want to. You can also decide not to believe in God or go, or go to church. Like an atheist, if you don't believe in God, you do not have to believe in something just because your family or staff believe in it. Things you can do. Let people know if you want to go to church, find a church you want to belong to, learn about different religions if you want to find something different, tell people if you do not want to go to church, respect other people's beliefs, things your staff should do listen to you, not judge you for what you believe in, help you attend the church you want, when you want, help you learn about religions and judges. What about this is important to you? Yeah, so what about that is important to you, Nathaniel? Choice. I think choice is the biggest factor because I do think that there's a lot of religions out there that people have um, talked to me about, but you know, it's my choice what I want to do. It's my choice to um, explore the history of the religion 
and the history of the religion. It is my choice if I want to go to church. It's my choice if I do not want to go to church. It's my, if someone's going to force me um, to believe in something, I'm going to run away. So it's my choice. That's what I want to make sure everyone um, knows from this topic is that it's your choice. So if anyone um, forces you about religion, go away because it's your choice. It's your private choice. This is a private choice, people. Thank you, Nathaniel. You're welcome. All right, so the right to vote. Ginger, do you want to talk about this one? You, you have the right to vote. People 18 years and older have the right to vote. Some people with disabilities cannot vote because a judge has taken away this right. Sometimes this is done through guardianship. Sometimes it's because the person has done a serious crime. Even if this happens, there are ways that people can get back the right to vote and they can get the support to vote even if they can't read or write. Things you can do to help you vote. First, find out if you can vote. And if you can't vote, find out why it was taken away from you. You can go to www.disabilityvote.org org to learn more about voting. Ask your guardian to help you get your right to vote back. Learn about voting and who you want to vote for. Respect other people's opinions. Things you stand for, people that assist you can do. They can help you learn about voting, support you to vote, respect your opinion, what is important to you? Well, for me, um, voting is a very, a very uh, essential right to um, help like your community or your area decide who you would like to um, serve as your senator or like your governor or president or even as far down as your people first group. That's where most people get their first 
idea of voting is they haven't voted um, in an election or have had like their family assist them with their voting rights. Great, thanks, Ginger. All right, so next up we'll talk about uh, the right for, to privacy. So Nathaniel, you wanna talk about this one with us? Yes. No one should share information about you without saying it is okay. You do not have to share any information with staff, family members, friends, or other people that you don't want to. People should knock on your door before they enter your house or the room you are in. People should let you be alone if you want when you are with someone or talking on the phone. People should not read your mail, your messages, or go through your things. You have spend time alone, can spend time alone when you want. Things you can do, decide what you want private and let people in your life know. Speak up when you want privacy. Speak up if someone does not give you the privacy you want. If they do not listen, tell someone else who can help. Learn how doctors and service agents, agencies share information about you. Things your staff should do. Learn what you want private and how you want to be treated. Never talk to other people outside the agency about you unless you give permission. Never say bad things about you to other people or share information you do not want shared. Help you learn about your privacy rights. Always do personal cares in private places. So what about that's important to you, Nathaniel, privacy? The number one thing about privacy is that my rights are protected and um, making sure that, you know, I give permission to let someone into my life if I want to let someone into my life. I mean, I'm protected of how I want to say something that might be confidential, but I'm very, careful on who I tell someone something that's very privately. Um, I've had some experiences and I just want to be aware now of who I'm confidential with and who I tell people. I'm just very aware. All right, great. Thanks, Nathaniel. Thanks. All right, Emily, do you want to talk with us about your right and people's right to talk with and be with who they want? Yes, I do. You have the right to talk to and be around anyone you want when you want. You can spend time with anyone you want to at any time. You can have who you want come to your home if you want. You can say that you do not want someone to come to your home without saying why. You can choose the people you want to be an intimate relationship with and who you want to have be your friends. You can join the groups you want to. This is important because being around other people is an important part of everyone's life. Not being allowed to see certain people or having someone come into your home without permission is not respecting your privacy. I practice this right weekly by making plans when and where to have appointments and when and where to see family and friends. I do sometimes tell one of my friends that I do not want her coming over without saying why. Uh, 
Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So next up, we've got the right to be free from abuse. So Christy, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. You have the right to be free from people hurting you. No one has the right to hurt you or abuse you. Hurt and abuse can be physical, like hitting, slapping, or pushing. It can be emotional, like yelling at you, putting you down, or calling you names. It can be sexual, like touching you where you don't want to be touched, making you touch the person, or having sex with you. There are also other ways that people can hurt you. They can be neglected. This happens if family or staff don't feed you, clean you, give you the medicine you need, or take care of you. If someone is taking your money or your things, making you do things that are not safe, hurting your body or causing you emotional problems, this is abuse. You have the right to report it and get help to, to get away from it. Things your staff can do. Support you to learn about abuse. Explain to you how to tell someone if something bad happens to you. L listen to you. Support you to get the help you need to get away from the abuse. Get help for you to talk to someone and feel better if something bad happens. Things you can do. Learn what abuse means. Ask your staff who you should tell if something bad happens to you. Speak up if people you, don't, you tell don't believe you. We're called Disability Rights Wisconsin for help. Great, thanks, Christy. And what, what about, um, you know, abuse awareness is important to you? Abuse awareness is important to me, knowing that you have the right to tell somebody and if you are being abused, it is not your fault. It's something with whoever is abusing you. It's not something you did or didn't do or said or didn't say. Right, absolutely. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. All right, your right to go to school, or I'm sorry, right to own what you want. I was looking at the wrong slide. Um, yeah, Ginger, you want to talk about this one with us? Yes, you have the right to own the things you want to. You can care for what you want. You can own a house. And I car. You can buy the food and clothes you want. You can decide who bar uses or borrows your things. You can also get rid of or sell the things you do not want anymore. Things you can do. Decide what things are important to you and let people who support you know. Buy your own things. Get rid of things you do not use or want anymore. Decide who gets to use your things. Learning, learn about renting or buying a home or renting an apartment. Learn about insurance and if you want to get it. If you're, if you are told you cannot have something, ask why. And ask what you can do 
together. Speak up if you don't agree with any limits put on you. Things your staff should do. Learn about what is important to you. Respect your decisions and what to buy. Keep or get rid of. Learn how to manage your money and spending if you need help. Help you learn about renting or owning a home versus owning an apartment, uh, versus renting an apartment. Help you learn about insurance. If, if, if they say you cannot have something, have them explain why and what you can do together to get it. No. So, don't have limits put on you unless you are at risk and they talk to you about why these limits are put on you. Yeah, so Ginger, what's important to you about owning what you want? Owning what I want and um, renting an apartment makes me like the most independent I can be. And that is like the highlight of um, my life is living on my own and yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Now the right to go to school. Nathaniel, you want to talk about this? Yes. Um, decide what goes out. Uh, and if you want to talk. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can. There you go. Okay, decide what your goals are and if you want to take classes or to go to college. Learn about your rights as a student. Meet with disability resource services at the college to ask for accommodations. If you need help, speak up and ask the school, your family or support staff. And then, why is what what uh, what is important to you about your right to go to school? You've gone to college, right? Yes, I've gone to college. College is the the most important step I took to live life skills to learn how to um, take risk on every level you can take as and as being educational as living on your own as financial as health reasons as uh, like actually living on your own, making your own decisions. Um, I think that going to school gives you everything 
that can be thrown at you before actually being an adult. It makes you go through risk and reward. It makes you feel um, what it's like to fail. And I think every person should learn how to fail and to see how each person can um, get out of failure, meaning how are you gonna learn from that failing experience? Is it gonna make you better? What did you learn from that failing experience? What steps did you take from that failure? And how did you overcome that failure to make it right the next time? And I think that from those experiences, experiences I did get my bachelor's degree in liberal studies. And I am pursuing um, advocacy work. And it's paying off from being a Living Well Grant um, participant to being an outreach self-advocate to now being on the ARC um, self-advocacy um, board. Um, board per se. So take every advantage that you can. Um, voluntary, non-voluntary, because um, college gives those gives you those options, and it gives you um, the experiences that I should take that volunteership instead of going for a paid job because that volunteership could lead to a paid job. And it gives you experiences that would lead to something greater. Thank you. Thanks, Nathaniel. All right, so speaking of jobs, um, uh, do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, the people's right to have a job? Yes. Um, Learn about different jobs and decide what you like and don't like. And then try new things when you do. Tell people what you like and don't like. Learn new skills that will help you keep a job. Do your part to find a job. Don't wait until someone else to find it for you. Speak up if you need help or do not understand something. And you have the right to get a job. All people can have a job. All people can work no matter what their disability is. You can get a job you like. You can get a job you're good at. You should be paid the same amount of money that people without disabilities are paid. You can get a job in your community. You do not have to work in a work center for people with disabilities if you do not want to. Um, there are laws to keep people safe at work. There are also laws to keep people from being discriminated against at work. The Americans with Disabilities Act protects people with disabilities at work. The Workforce in Innovation and Opportunity Act helps people with disabilities get jobs. It is important for self-advocates to know a little bit about these two laws. Yeah. So, Things you can do. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, it's okay. Learn about different jobs and decide what you like and don't like. Try new things when you do. Tell people what you like and don't like. Learn new skills that will help you keep a job. Do your part to find a job. Don't wait for someone else to find it for you. Okay, when I read that, okay. Um, things your staff can do. Help you get services to get a job. Talk to you about what you want to do for a job. 
help you learn about your job options, support you to learn skills that will help you keep a job, give you support on the job if you need it. This is called job coaching, help you understand how work can change your benefits, help you learn important laws about working. Right. What's the most important thing about having a job for you? It, it always wants, having the most important thing, it gives me value. It wants me to keep on learning about new, um, new like experiences, new words, new what's next in technology, what's next for people with disabilities, what is the next thing? And I think that mental health is the next thing on the map. And we really need to be innovators of that right now. And that's what the next thing is for me. Yeah. Thank you. It makes you happy and healthy, right? Yes, exactly. It does. Great. Great. Um, I know we're, we're running out of time, so we could just quickly go through some of the other ones. Um, Christy, do you want to talk about your right to um, have some, you know, rest and do, do the leisure activities you want and why that's important? So rest and leisure, things you can do. Find hobbies and things you like to do. Rest and take time to relax. Exercise and get outside for fresh air. Tell people if you are feeling stressed out. Tell people what you want your day or week to be like. People are happy when they have time to rest and do things they like. You have the right to decide how you spend your time. You can take vacation. You can do things in the community that you like. People who take care of themselves are healthier and happier. This is important to me because I like to have my own free time and I don't want my entire day dictated by somebody else. Very good, thanks, Christy. All right, what about healthcare? Ginger, you wanna talk briefly about healthcare? Yeah. And rights, our rights around no, I have no rights to medical care and doctors and um, medicine because being healthy is one of the basic importances in life. Um, and you should be able to choose your own doctors. Your doctors should keep all your information private. Um, you should learn um, how to make your own appointments and like learn about how your support staff can help you in your doctor's appointment, help you set up your medication if you're on your if you're on medication. This is a very important right to me because as I said before, your health is one of the cornerstones of life. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ginger. All right, and do you want to also talk briefly about your right to choose where you live and if you if you live with roommates or who you live with? Right. Um, you have the right to live where you want and with the people you want. 
<laughs> you should always get to choose where you live to get and with your parents or all on your own or maybe in a group home with other individuals or even in an apartment with a roommate. Yeah, and that, why is that important to you, to be able to choose where you want to live and who you live with? It's very important to me because then I can set up my own schedule as to when my caregivers come in every day and um like and you can learn about the different places you can live. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks, Ginger. All right. And we also have the uh, rights to choose your own supports and services. Right, Christy, do you want to talk about this one a little bit? You you choose your own caregivers. I do. So things you can do. Talk to agencies about how they can support you before you agree to get support from them. Tell your staff where you want to shop, get your hair cut, go to eat, and more. If they are not letting you go to these places, ask them why. Tell your case manager if you do not like someone who is supporting you. Everyone has a right to choose where they shop get service, and get services from. It also means you can choose the service, services you get because you have a disability. You can choose who supports you with personal cares and who is coming in and out of your personal space. Mm -hmm. uh, this is important to me because I do live on my own and I do get to choose who's taking care of me, who's helping me and who I'm letting into my private life with personal cares and just being in my apartment space. Yeah, excellent, thank you. So we have a couple of rights areas, but I'm just gonna show them on the screen and, and just mention them. And then I wanna open it up for any questions or comments. I hope that's okay with my co-presenters, okay? Um, so, you know, people have the right to, you know, decide their own schedule, what they wanna do and when they do it. People also have um, the right to make the big choices, big and small, all choices about your life. And you have the right to get support to make those choices or to make those choices independently um, and to get the information you need to make the choice that you want. So uh, with that, um, you know, uh, we will be um, providing these toolkits after we test them out a little bit on the Living Well Project website. So stay tuned. Um, when they are available, I'm sure they'll be blasted out across, um, you know, Wisconsin through the social media channels and whatnot from the Board for People with Developmental Disabilities. And then we're also going to be putting on some um, um, YouTube, um, some videos on the Self-Determination YouTube channel eventually about the various rights areas so that self-advocates can learn about those. So subscribe to the YouTube channel and you will get the notices for those videos when they become available. So I noticed that there are a couple of hands up and I just wanted to um, pause then um, and ask uh, the people that have their hands up or if you have a chat that you wanna put in the chat, a question to, to unmute or drop that chat in. Okay, well, um, so, Sometimes I think you know people accidentally hit the uh, raise your hand button um, by mistake and then the hand stays up. But uh, feel free to unmute or put your question in the chat if you have it. Otherwise, we'll just you know see see if the self advocate leaders have any parting words about um, you know people understanding their rights or fully exercising their rights. You have any words of advice for other self advocates in Wisconsin? It's your life, live it how you think best. 
Very good. Anyone else want to say anything? Okay. With rights, you are protected, but make sure that you know your rights, read your rights, understand each right, mm -hmm. to make sure that you understand before you go into meetings, before you go into um, meetings that concern your life and make sure you do your homework before you go into like a DVR meeting, to go and to see your landlord, to go into certain meetings, because then you, you will have researched of what you talked about. And then you'll be able to come out strong in that meeting. Yeah, thank you, great. Yep, Ramsey, do you have a question? Hey, this is Ramsey. I just wanna say these guys did a great job getting back to the self advocacy toolkit. Um, um, when do you think the the self advocate when when might they be be available? Yeah, I would say in a maybe a couple two to three months. Would you agree, Sally? Yes, I would say that is probably when we'll package them. We're still um, making some changes to the family guardian. People are looking at that, so I would say uh, probably around maybe the first of the year. Yeah, and in the meantime. This presentation is posted on the Self-Determination Conference website and contains a lot of the same information that's available in the uh, self-advocate um, booklet. So it has all the different rights areas, has some different questions, you know, uh, or it will have some different questions, but um, the, the um, presentation, the things that you can do, that's like kind of the, the main part of the booklet is to help self-advocates understand the things that they can do to exercise their rights in each one of those areas so so i saw somebody posted a question will we will post them on the wisconsin board for people with developmental disabilities page on the living well page but we will also if you're um if you are subscribed to uh bpdd's email list we will blast it out at that time also so yeah, yeah. so um uh, great ways to stay connected. We'll be sure to get it up on our Facebook. And as Shannon said, we're going to have these videos. So. Yeah. So I recognize that we're a little over on the time. So we'll sign off on the, um, the, the presentation now. But for those of you who still have questions, I can hang on for a couple more minutes if you'd like and answer your questions. And don't forget about the dance party at 4.30. Ah, yeah. Always a highlight of the virtual conference. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for joining. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting us present.